Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsky, and as always, I have the excellent pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Shipman. How are you today, Matt? I am good, Brian. It is now Belmont Stakes Week, just a few days away. All of those grade one races, and of course, the test of the champion. Yeah, the Belmont Stakes, the test of the champion, Matt. Uh, eight horses for the Belmont Stakes. A little less than some of that, uh, a little less than that for uh, several of the other grade one races, but we sure do have a lot of big names running uh, Saturday at Belmont Park and even a few running on Friday at Belmont Park. And uh, without further ado, Matt, let's jump into that Belmont Stakes draw morning line. We see We the People, perhaps a little bit surprising, was made the two to one morning line favorite through the rail. Matt, I, I think that morning line favoritism is a function of lone speed in this mile and a half Belmont. Lone speed for sure, Brian, after the field settled down and, and uh, some horses that might get in uh, decided not to enter, um, draw on the rail. I mean, I guess any, any question about whether uh, we the people was uh, going to go out front was answered with that. I guess maybe he won't get break from the gate. Well, but I don't even know if that's going to matter. Uh, we the people's uh, going to go to the lead. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, I don't think the draw matters with an eight horse field and a mile and a half here at Belmont. Uh, we the people will go to the lead. Flavian Pratt will need to see if he can take this horse from a nine furlong one turn Peter Pan to a mile and a half around the entire big Sandy racing surface mat. Um, he's a threat as lone speed, but there are horses here that should make a run at him some point during the race. Ness, the Philly could do it. Creative Minister, the five could do it. Even Golden Glider, maybe. Uh, there, there's several that probably will want to, uh, uh, go after him at some point during the late backstretch, perhaps. Uh, we, the people, it'll be interesting to see if he opens up big early or if he really tries to slow down those fractions. But I, I'm still dubious whether he can get the job done in a grade one race, 12 furlongs. He got pretty washy and pretty upset in the Arkansas Derby, just two starts back. Same thing could happen in the Belmont, and it's a long way to carry the speed. Yeah, it sure is. And, and on top of it, Brian, you know, seeing him at two to one uh, as the favorite, whether, whether he ends up that low, uh, it, we shall see. But... Uh, with him getting that much betting action and question marks abound, I mean, not just on We the People, but on plenty of the horses in this race, it, it, it is really a hard spot in my eyes to uh, take the favorite to win. Yeah, I, I agree with that, Matt. And uh, We the People, don't get me wrong, I, I realize he is a threat coming off a nice yeah. win over the track and being the clear speed here in the Belmont Stakes. But uh, yeah, uh, part of my... Part of me being dubious about him taking the Belmont wire to wire is that uh, unattractive morning line. Mo Donegal was a little bit more expected, five to two. He drew the six. One thing I'll say about Mo Donegal, there have been a few races, maybe the Remsen most notably, where he was able to at least stay in touch early. He's, he's a late runner by every sense of the word, but unlike maybe the Derby winner, Matt, I think he does have the ability to show just a little bit of get up and go early. And I think that's an advantage here in this Belmont without much speed. Yeah, I agree completely with that. Um, you know, I, I, there's no doubt that Mo Donegal, he's, he's not going to get as far behind as he did in the Derby, so he won't have as much to do. Um, and, and after the draw, Todd Pletcher, uh, you know, he, he, he felt that Mo Donegal uh, has the ability to stay, stay closer to the pace than he did in the Derby. And, uh, you know, I, I I guess I expect him to be able to be running down the stretch towards the end of the 12 furlongs. But like with everybody else, they haven't done it. We shall see. Yeah, you don't know. A uh, mile and a half is different. But Mo Donegal, more than any other horse, has always finished off his race as well. And he still could end up the favorite despite being listed here as the second choice. Rich Strike, on the other hand, the Kentucky Derby winner, the third choice on the morning line. Now, I think he's a horse who's more dependent on one late run. It, it looks like his races, he just doesn't have any speed. I think he, Eric Reed even commented that uh, 
you know, they tried to put a little speed in him at once and it didn't work. So he's a one run horse here, mile and a half, new track, very little speed. I, I think that spells for a uh, tough recipe for Rich Strike to uh, repeat his Kentucky Derby win here in the final leg of the Triple Crown. Yeah, typically uh, it, it has been, but, you know, to his credit, he has uh, shipped to New York and, and he has really, really looked good on the track training. He's been calm. He's been composed. New settings uh, for a horse that, you know, we, we have seen uh, can be very high strung. But, yeah, Eric Reed says that clearly said, no, no, we're not changing the way he runs. He's going to make a late run. Um, I guess I have as big a question mark about uh, rider Sonny Leone as I do about the horse. Sonny never having uh, ridden at Belmont Park obviously has not ridden a mile and a half race at Belmont Park. And it is just flat out and, and jockeys say it, trainers say it, it is just flat out a tough spot place for an inexperienced rider to, uh, to, to ride in a big race like this. Yeah. Good point, Matt. I think that's true. And I think for a lot of reasons, I'm, I'm off the rich strike bandwagon, if you will, here in the Belmont Stakes. I'm not off the creative minister bandwagon, though, Matt. Uh, here's a horse who's continued to impress. Remember his connections ponied up $150,000 to supplement the son of creative cause late to the Triple Crown. That came after a very impressive win on Kentucky Derby Day in which he stayed relatively close to the pace, pounced, and was the best horse down the stretch. I certainly can see that scenario playing out itself in the Belmont again. This horse just looks good. It looks like he's thriving now, only three months into his racing career. Four good races under his belt. He's done it at four different tracks. Brian Hernandez Jr., you know, he won the Breeders' Cup Classic uh, almost 10 years ago with Fort Larned. Matt, I, I think he might be in store for another big win here with Creative Minister. Certainly has got a shot. The morning line odds are more attractive. And, and everything you said about Creative Minister, uh, his short campaign and how he's been developing are positives. But at the same time, for me, I have to be questioning, you know, this is going to be his fifth race in a relatively short amount of time since March. He has followed a triple crown schedule into the Belmont Stakes. Didn't run in the Derby, but he ran on Derby Day, went to the Preakness, now to the Belmont Stakes. That can be a good thing. But at the same time, you know, you have to wonder if this fifth race, going a mile and a half, is it going to take a toll on Creative Minister? Of course, trainer Kenny McPeak won, at, uh, won the Belmont Stakes with uh, Sarava. And he said after the race, hey, I learned that it's important to uh, get your horse time at Belmont Park before the big race. So they went right from the Preakness and Pimlico to Belmont to prepare. Yeah, I, I, I like a lot about him, to tell you the truth, Matt. I, I like the fact that he's got uh, grandsires uh, like uh, Tappet and Giants Causeway, real distance influences. And, you know, the Triple Crown schedule, yes, but the Derby is the real, real hardship, I think, for a lot of horses. And he he had it pretty easy that day in his a mile 16th allowance win. So I don't think it's quite the same. I thought he ran a very good race in the Preakness. Early voting, uh, epicenter are not here. I think Creative Minister could lay pretty close early and uh, be the horse that's uh, uh, taking over in the stretch. We shall see. Another one who should get a lot of play, I think, more than her 8-1 to one morning line. Matt, is Nest the Philly coming off a second place finish in the Kentucky Oaks? Uh, Nest uh, also bred to go long. Uh, it is interesting that Irad Ortiz probably had the choice. He's been riding both Mo Donegal and Nest, and not surprisingly, he stuck with Mo Donegal the boy over Nest the Philly in here. Yeah, because, you know, not just the Belmont Stakes, but looking down the road, there are some, you know, uh, some big races that Mo Donegal, bigger purses that he may be uh, 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 heading towards down the road. Um, you know, Ness, hey, if any horse, uh, if you just look at breeding and you didn't see the the horse's names or their past performances, uh, 
uh, looking at this Belmont Stakes, you're gonna you're gonna gravitate to uh, Nest as a son of Curlin and out of an AP Indy mare. And of course, Todd Pletcher has won the Belmont Stakes uh, with uh, Philly before with Ray X to Riches. He has been training uh, Nest and Mo Donegal together uh, using the techniques that has produced such great success for Pletcher in the Belmont Stakes. A new trainer to the Belmont Stakes, Matt, will be Johnny Ortiz, the trainer of number eight, Barbara Road. Now, Barbara Road won two races early in his career back-to-back -back nicely. Since then, he's lost six consecutive stakes races, Matt. Why should we consider Barbara Road off that six-race losing streak as a real contender here in the Belmont Stakes? Hey, hey, Brian, you know, you, you can use the word lose, but we're not talking about finishing seventh and eighth and ninth and sixth in in those losses we're talking about races where he hit the board uh, you know on the kentucky derby trail brought home some big paychecks and 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 most recently uh ran a, a noteworthy sixth in the uh, uh kentucky derby and for me he's an interesting horse if you're looking for some odds I don't, I don't think he's a win contender frankly brian but you know i give him a legitimate chance to get another big check in an important race yeah he has gotten a check in in all six of those races matt the kentucky derby six the rebel third were actually both good performances in fact i made mention that he was very much uh similar to mo donegal in the derby maybe mo donegal finished ever so slightly faster than barbara road but uh, a very similar performances between him and mo donegal in the derby and the other, the other four losses, as I mentioned, in that six-race losing streak were second-place finishes, so a very consistent rallier. Uh, Matt, the others in the field here are a little bit longer. Skippy Longstocking uh, has had a good experience against good horses without really getting it done, coming off a fifth in the Preakness, a third in the Wood Memorial. Golden Glider uh, has some female distance uh, uh, pedigree in there, and Mark Cassie has won the Belmont Stakes recently. Do either of these two strike you as possible upsetters on Belmont Stakes Day? They do not, Brian. Uh, um, I, you know, I just don't think Skippy Longstocking is uh, is of the quality of the top contenders that we've been talking about. Golden Glider started out his uh, career uh, with two wins, seemed to get a little bit off form, and then a good second place you know, we're talking about he was 10 lengths behind We the People and the Peter Pan, but that was enough for uh, Mark Cassidy to take a shot here in the Belmont Stakes. Yeah, I think you could draw a line through that with uh, the the wet one-turn Peter Pan. Maybe Golden Glider is the is the bomb that interests me a little bit more than Skippy Longstocking in the Belmont. With that being said, Matt, let's, uh, let's jump to our Belmont Stakes wagers here. People are waiting to see what you want to bet here in the Belmont Stakes, I will admit, and I will still, and I will still say that the Belmont Stakes is is I don't know if I'll say it, a head scratcher, but for me, it's a race that is really hard to uh, come up with a winner with a lot of confidence. So <laughs> I'm going to do uh, you know a, a ten dollar exact the box, looking for a little bit of a price. I'm going with Todd Pletcher, Brian. <laughs> Of all the trainers in the race, he's the one that seems to have a real understanding of what it takes for success in the Belmont Stakes. $10 exact a box on the Pletcher horses, Nest and Modonical. And then my other race, uh, my other uh, wager is a trifecta. Again, you'll see from the structure of it on the screen, uh, uh, I'm not leaning on any horse in the top position. I, I think we've got five contenders for the win spot and second uh creative minister mo donegal ness rich strike we the people and i'm going to take a shot with barbara road at some odds to sneak into the trifecta in third so a dollar trifecta key which will cost twenty dollars Okay, Matt. Matt is on Pletcher, and Pletcher is looking for win number four. He's won three of these Belmont Stakes already. Interesting, uh, interesting bets there, Matt. I could see what you're doing with Barber Road uh, coming up for third. There's a reasonable shot that that happens. I don't like as quite as many win contenders as you. Let's take a look at my 
wagers here. Um, I've got a little bit more. I'll, I'll go with the trifectas first, which are below there. I, I, I'm taking a shot. I, I want to collect something nice, as I often do. I'm not looking for a a moderate score with with these bets. So creative minister, I'm going to go with my top pick. I think he offers good value here as the fourth or fifth choice in the Belmont Stakes. And I believe this horse is ready to step up and run a very good race. Maybe not mile and a half at Belmont, you never know. But uh, for the value, I certainly like Creative Minister best. And I think Mo Donegal is the horse to beat. Mo Donegal is the horse most likely to uh, fill out the trifecta, either second or third. So these are two simple trifectas, Creative Minister over Mo Donegal, over three other horses that I like to a point. We the people, Nest and Barber Road. And then I'll switch second and third. So we the people, Nest Barber Road can run second with Mo Donegal third. In, in essence, I'm saying creative minister for the win. Mo Donegal either runs second or third. I don't think Rich Strike offers very good value at all in the Belmont this time around as opposed to the Kentucky Derby. Also, I like a horse in the Belmont Gold Cup map, the two mile race on Friday. So this is a two day daily double with the Belmont Gold Cup, Belmont Stakes double. But my horse is law, third choice on the morning line. So this could be a nice daily double if I get him home. He's a German who certainly likes the distance. And then I'll be using my top three win contenders in the Belmont. Creative Minister, of course, Mo Donegal, of course. And we the people, just in case it's too easy for him early. All right, Matt, we've uh, we've got some other races that we should talk about. I mean, we got Jackie's Warrior. We got uh, Rougier running on Friday. We got so many good horses. We have uh, Echo Zulu seeing if she can get back on the winning uh, track in the acorn facing a, a pretty nice Brad Cox, Judd Monfilly in there. Uh, but let's talk about the Met Mile and the Ogden Phipps as our as our secondary races. Uh, Matt, the Met Mile flight line, this is weird. I mean, this is, this is more than Danzig uh, 40 years ago when Danzig won his first three races, the son of Northern Dancer. This is this is kind of special stuff that he's done in his first three races, but they were all in California. They were all last year. They were all seven furlongs or shorter. Now he comes to Belmont for the $1 million Met Mile, faces some good horses. It's a short field, sure, a five. But I, I think there's reasons to question whether Flightline will win. I agree, Brian. I mean, you checked off a nice list there, Brian, of accomplishment, accomplishment. a very, very impressive accomplishment for flight line in his first three uh uh races but at the same time i, I just have hearing in my ear uh uh handicappers from the past saying never bet a horse that's trying to do things that they haven't done before and in that long list of accomplishments brian that you that you described about flight line at the same time there is a list of things now in the Met Mile that Flightline hasn't accomplished, going the mile, sh running at a new track, not running out of his stall, shipping across the country. It's been five months since he's run last. Yes, Brian. Yes. Could he just wallop this field? Of course he can. But at three to five on the morning line and the possibility that he's going to be less than that, I have to take a shot against him. Yeah, and, and, I, and I don't blame you for doing it, Matt. I, I personally think Flightline is the horse to beat here in the Met Mile, and that's probably not saying much, but uh, the value is, is simply not there. Yeah, probably two to five or, or so in the Met Mile. So it might be worth a take to shot to beat him. I don't really want to take much of a shot here in the Met Mile because I, I do think he's the likely winner. But as Matt says, the value is not there. Three other good horses in the race in this five-horse field. You have a Happy Saber, a great one winner who – who could sit off the pace a, a little bit here and is uh, coming off a nice return race when second to Olympiad last time at Churchill Downs. You have Aloha West who rallied to win the Breeders' Cup Sprint last year and has a decent enough return race where you think he could move forward, especially if there's a hot pace. And then you have the horse who I think has to go after Flightline early or has to at least stay in touch early, and that's Speaker's Corner. A clear second choice on the morning line map that he has really developed into a nice horse this year. Well, Brian, he certainly has. I mean, he flashed a little potential early in his career um, uh, as a three-year-old and such. But, uh, yeah, he's uh, three for three this year, Brian, uh, with impressive victories, 
the connections of Bill Mott and, and Godolphin. He's two for two in his career at uh, Belmont Park. He's two for two in one turn miles. He's got speed figures that are almost, that are very close to the ballpark of flight line. So uh, um, he's in great form right now. All right, Matt, let's let's get to some other wagers here because I see you using the Met Mile as one of your wagers. That's the bottom one on this chart here, folks. Matt has a Met Mile exact box and and basically you're doing what you just talked about. You're you're saying no flight line for me, please, and using the other three factors. I am, Brian. You know, uh, again, and uh, uh, flight line is the horse to beat. Flight line could be very special, but you know, for the, all the reasons that we said, and and personally, I I just don't like horses that have problems with their feet, um, which is what has been going on with Flightline with uh, uh, his uh, uh, so much time between races and and since that win in the Malibu, yeah, he could win, and if he does, I hope it's a, a an exciting uh, big victory, and, and Flightline continues on to to race more this year, but I'm going to take a shot, not a big shot. Uh, you know, $5 exact a box in the Met mile using speakers corner, Aloha West and happy saver. Yeah. And I think happy saver is a horse that would interest me as the fourth choice in here. Cause I think he might be sitting behind the top two. And, it, and, and if there is any weakness there, or there is any, suicidal pace battle between the two. I think Happy Saver, I like a little bit more than Aloha West on class. Yes, I know Aloha West won the Breeders' Cup. Don't yell at me about the class thing. But Happy Saver's been a class horse at a mile up to a mile and a quarter. So maybe he can sit a trip and run a good race. But I'm I'm not I'm not jumping in this race as much as Matt uh, because I, I I just think Flight Line's first three races are as good a first three races as I've ever seen in my 50 years of watching horse racing. Matt, your other bet also includes the Met Mile as well. Yeah, again, I'm going to take another small shot uh, uh, that uh, Flight Line might not win the Met Mile. I'm going to do a two-day two daily double Friday to Saturday, $5 tickets. This daily double combines the New York... Uh, or maybe we should be calling it the Chad Brown, Brian, because he's just been dominating the race. He's got four horses uh, uh, entered in the field. Um, uh, three of them I'm going to use in this daily double. Rogier, Virginia Joy, Bleecker Street. Um, and also I'm going to use Family Way from uh, Brandon Walsh. And I'm just going to use Speaker's Corner in the Met Mile. Just a little shot looking for uh some prices yeah the new york uh the new york is the is a very interesting race on friday again that's a two-day daily double rougier could be just uh the the best uh older uh turf female in the country this year uh, she was of course a huge purchase for peter brandt late last year after some big races in france and she looked the part winning her first start here in new york but bleaker street has never lost so uh, Bleecker Street, those two, I'm, I'm interested to see those two throw down here in the New York. Virginia Joy, I think, is the big, the big uh, danger. And of course, she is also trained by Chad Brown, a very interesting New York, Matt. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the Ogden Phipps because it's a clash of champions, as I wrote earlier this week, Matt. Malathot was the three-year-old Philly champion. Latruska was the older female champion. This too only has a field of five, but the other three are all good horses. Bonnie South, I believe was second in this race last year. She's always a rallying presence. And then you got search results, the Acorn winner, Kentucky Oaks second last year, coming off a nice win. You also have uh, uh, another good filly in here, Matt, in Clarier, who's been knocking on the door in big races, that uh, well-bred Stone Street filly. So Really nice race. Five five horses. We wish there were more, but on the other hand, you can't knock the five that are in the Ivkin Phipps. Yeah, it's a powerful group of five, Brian. Uh, um, of course, you know the uh, they they have the you know they they have the tough tough task. Three of them of of dealing with Latruska and and Malathot, uh, uh, Clarier, uh you know, won her first race of the year in an allowance at Fairgrounds, but then ran into Latruska in the Apple Blossom and was second. Uh, uh, 
Bonnie South was second in her debut behind Malathot. So uh, they are a couple of really good horses. And you mentioned uh, search results for Chad Brown already has a good uh, win this year. But it looks like the top two, Latruska and uh, Malathot, are uh, the ones to beat. Latruska was an impressive winner of the Ogden Phipps last year. Yeah, I, I, I'm of the opinion that Malathot can be a champion again this year. And of course, that would come directly at the hands of Latruska. On the other hand, a mile and 16th, one turn, Belmont, usually that track is pretty fast, not a ton of speed in here. I don't know if this is the spot where Malathot beats Latruska this time. Uh, Latruska, it seems like the race is set up for her a little bit. Search results, the Brown Philly. The Acorn winner has done well at Belmont and has some speed, so it'll be interesting to see if she tries to keep Latruska busy early. But uh, unfortunately, I think this race does set up a little bit for the favorite Latruska, clear favorite on the morning line over the younger Malathot. But I think Malathot gets better in more fair races with a little bit more speed, maybe a little bit longer, maybe two turns, all of the above. But it's nice to see them hook up early in the year, Matt. All right, we haven't gotten to my other wagers Matt, so let's jump on that real quick. I, I, I'm I'm struggling to find a lot of good value. I think Creative Minister yeah. offers good value in the Belmont Stakes, but I, I, I like too many favorites, frankly, in these uh, two uh, two days of Friday, Saturday at Belmont Stakes. So I'm looking for a little bit more value. Uh, having said that, I'm going to start off with the two clear favorites in this all turf triple. This is on Saturday, folks, and it's three different races, but it's a $3 minimum all turf triple. I'm not making a choice. I think Regal Glory, Speak of the Devil, one of them is going to win the Just a Game. They are two monsters for Chad Brown. But then I look for some value in the other races because both the uh, uh, Jaipuri race eight and the Manhattan race 10 have pretty big fields. And I think the favorites uh, are, are certainly beatable here. I'm going to use the favorite in the Jiper, Arrest Me Red, the horse to beat. But I think both Casa Creed, the defending champion, Gear Jockey, will have good value in here. And I like those three as my three in the Jiper. And then the Manhattan's pretty wide open, but I could see Rock Emperor uh, jumping up again. He got good last fall. He ran a big race at Belmont. I think this race could set up pretty well for Rock Emperor, 10 to 1 on the morning line. Santine I have to use after his performance at Churchill Downs. And I always like Gufo. If there is a little speed, and, and there will be some speed here in this Manhattan, Gufo is always a big threat to win. So I'm going to try to get a little uh, value in the second and third legs of that all-turf triple. That, that would cost $54. If you want to make a choice between Regal Glory and Speak of the Devil, go ahead. Speak of the Devil looked like an absolute monster in her American debut. I guess I like her a little bit better than Regal Glory, but Regal Glory is just so good and consistent. Yeah, Brian, and that's one of those uh, new pick threes with the $3 base rate wager, isn't it? Yes, yes. This is this is a this is a, a, a not a real high uh, takeout, and uh, it is a uh, I think it's a good bet. And basically, I'm I guess it's not a free square because I'm using two horses in the race for the first leg, but I don't really see me losing that. It's just a matter of if I can get one of my three in each of the wide open, more wide open races, the Jiper and the Manhattan. All right, Matt, we did it. We talked about this Belmont Stakes card. Uh, uh, any favorites you see getting beat? Is Jockey's Warrior vulnerable? Is uh, uh, Jack Christopher vulnerable? Is Echo Zulu vulnerable in, in any of those uh, True North or uh, 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 Woody Stevens or Acorn? I don't know, Brian. Or is Flightline vulnerable? We shall find out. A lot of big favorites. Uh, uh, a lot of really quality, quality horses to uh, enjoy this weekend uh, at Belmont Park. And, and of course, I was I will be out there. I was already it was nice to meet some uh, horse center fans from the Rich Strike camp at the draw the other day. So uh, uh, if you see me out there this weekend at Belmont Park, uh, Thursday, Friday or Saturday, please say hello. We uh, We'd like to meet our, our horse center fans. 
Excellent, Matt. Excellent. Also, folks, if you haven't yet subscribed to our YouTube channel here at Horse Racing Nation, go ahead and do that now. Uh, we appreciate it. We want to thank our sponsor, the best contest site out there. That's Derby Warriors. Also, Candace Curtis for the race graphic from the Belmont Stakes. It'll be interesting one way or the other. Matt, I, I think you already gave us your parting shot, or do you have anything more for us? Yeah, no, that'll that'll do, Brian. That'll do it. Good. All right, folks, enjoy the Belmont Stakes. Enjoy the big uh, weekend of racing with so many stars, even if there are some short fields. Matt and I will be back next week talking a little bit of Belmont, but a little bit of future racing as well. We'll see you right here back then on Horse Center.